All right, thanks so much to Graham. Don't forget to call us just after the 7 o'clock news. It's classic play, and you can vent about all the sporting action that took place this past weekend. Now, last week, the National Energy Regulator announced electricity tariff hikes of, on average, 25.5% starting this April. Also dominating the news headlines last week, Julius Malema, as reported to be a listed director of four companies, and President Jacob Zuma's chief operations officer, Jesse Duarte's resignation, became the focus of uh, newspapers over the weekend. And to talk us through the headlines in our local publications, we have Arashini Pele, Managing Editor of Mail and Guardian Online. Arashini, thanks so much for joining us. Thanks for having me, Sabine. And he's just such a, a scrumptious bone to chew on, Julius really Malema. Is. And the newspapers, obviously, are very tempted to just lead with the stories. What is the, the latest, particularly if we look at the Mail and Guardian, the inside of Julius Malema's hit list and the expose that you were running? Yeah, we had a really comprehensive spread on Malema um, this Friday, and I see a lot of the, the Saturday papers followed up with you know Malema stories as well so we've seen that dominating the headlines for a long time now mm -hmm. what we actually did is that we really um, went inside Malema's war as we called it mm -hmm. and we looked at his um, gunning for Praveen Gordon I mean he's really made a, a play for Praveen Gordon and SARS saying that there's a hit list out for him and now what he's done he's, he's leaked a document which um, many editors have had in this country and have been sitting on for some time a document that that, that purports to say that SARS has been targeting Zuma sympathizers and um, in this document, there's a couple of people listed, you know, well-known people, um, Fikile and Balula, um, Malema himself, and, and other people in government that are close to Zuma. So he's leaked this and said that SARS are out to get him. Now, of course, SARS has completely denied this, and we've seen this in several of the weekend papers. We've also gone inside um, the directorships and looked more closely at what you know, he's listed as being a director of. Still, an active director. Yeah, and you know, he, we heard him, um, he was on this channel, he was on, he was on 702, he's been doing a bit of a media tour, yeah. denying all of this, but yet his name is still listed um, as a director. And, and, and the thing is, that's why we, we end up having, uh, be it speculation, or, or forming our own opinion, because there isn't a, a solid truth that comes out. There's always the denialism, uh, and, and, and the, the, the facts actually speak contrary to that. Yeah, I mean, it's really hard with Malema. You know, it's hard to get him to answer a straight question. And we saw him um, refusing to disclose how much he earns. And, and Zuma actually springing into his defense a little bit, saying he's not a government um, you know, official. This is, this is true. He's not, he's not obliged to disclose his income. Mm -hmm. But yet it's hard for us to know exactly where all that money is coming from. And now we see that um, SARS is actually doing a lifestyle audit of him. They're refusing to talk about it. But yeah. we know that this is happening. Now, SARS says they've done 10,000 of these in the past two years, so we shouldn't get too excited. So SARS is clearly trying to stay out, out of the firing line. But they're doing this audit, and we can only wait to see what comes out of that. Yeah. And, and, and the cracks are beginning to show as well in the ANC, the ruling party, uh, with the recent uh, resignation of Jesse Duarte, the COO. Is that confirmed, or was this a document that was leaked uh, prior the discussion? It looks like um, it was a leaked document. I would, I, I'm not sure because I saw an article last night saying that you know they're denying it. Zizi Kadwa from the presidency denying that she's quit. However, we've seen the entire um, resignation letter online now, in, and it looks pretty legitimate to me. We can only wait and see this week if that is legitimate. It's sure yeah. to come out, but I mean it really does show, like you said, some fractures in the ruling party, especially in the presidency. This is Jesse Duarte. She's a struggle veteran. She's a highly respected figure. And if you go and read that letter, it's quite harrowing. Um, you know, she says there's some real things tearing apart the presidency right now. And I think it points to um, a lot of people trying to get Zuma's ear. A lot mm. of people uh, you know, claiming to have his ear, claiming to have his favor, and him having to juggle all these various factions that are laying a claim on him. And I think um, what we have to worry about as a public is how this is going to trickle down to governance, these kind of power struggles, and how that's going to affect service delivery, on the, you know, finally. Yeah. All right. Looking at other uh, stories making headlines, besides Julius, we see even this morning still, we see the minister, the deputy minister of public works coming out about her rape claim, the alleged rape that took place 20 years ago, and uh, now fingering another high positioned uh, official in the basic education department. How will the story unfold? Because there's, again, denialism on the one side. How then do you prove that, indeed, there was a transgression? I know this is going to be um, a hard one to prove. I, th I guess only time will tell us through this week how that's going to work out. Um, Again, we're seeing a lot of things coming out of government that you wouldn't necessarily have seen in previous regimes. There seems to be a less tighter control of what gets leaked out. That's it. So um, we really have to see how this plays out, how they're going to deal with this one, because it's going to reflect quite badly if they deal with it badly. All right, so we've just touched on the Soweto now. Let's go on to the Times final countdown. It's exactly 101 days before the kickoff of the FIFA World Cup. Yeah. 
And it's very exciting. It is very exciting. I think the concern for us, well, what I've noticed is that, you know, we, we feel so ready and now we're hearing reports of, um, of, you know, not enough bookings coming through, not enough, you know, um, I hear that a lot of sand parks um, kind of accommodation has been released by FIFA yeah. because they're not getting enough bookings. So as a country, I think we're just sitting back hoping that people come because we've done all this preparation now yeah. and we feel really ready. And Minister uh, Martina Svenskalvek also saying that inflating prices is not going to do our tourism sector any wonders. Any favors, uh, yes. and, and But also that prices can't remain the same because it is high demand season. Mm -hmm. Yeah, exactly. Okay. All right. And we've done the Sunday Times. Let's see the star again. Malema, thousands old and his license expired last year. So he's even dr driving allegedly without a valid driver's license. I mean, this is the thing. We're going to see a lot more, st of the, uh, you know, kind of stories coming out about Malema. And um, they vowed not to make any more statements about their president's lifestyle. They did a media blitz, ended on Wednesday with a statement saying we're not talking anymore about this. But they're going to have to, I think, with all these things emerging. Mm. But what's interesting is that something we covered in the Mail and Guardian is that actually every province of the, you know, every um, ANC Youth League province is supporting Malema. He's up for re-election in April. And they're all firmly behind their president, despite all of this. Mm. And I think what we're going to find is that as the media as perhaps, you know, uh, the liberal middle class, we're kind of going, this is ridiculous, but his core constituency looks up to someone who has worked his way up to this kind of bling lifestyle. Mm -hmm. So we're unlikely to see Malema unseated, even with all the, you know, these scandals surrounding him. My goodness. <laughs> Titillating nonetheless, and you can get yourself copies of the local publications for in-depth coverage of these stories. But uh, Varashini, thanks so much for joining us this morning. We're speaking to Varashini Pele. She's managing editor of Mail and Guardian Online, and you can visit them online at mg.co. We take a look at your weather update for this morning and we'll be back just after 7 o'clock with Classic Play.